Here we have the Canyon Spectral on of Fabian Burrell, double world downhill champion and the winner of the first ever Enduro World Series. Now Fabian is 1 meter 80 and he rides a size large Canyon Spectral on. Now we'll talk to the man himself a little bit later on his choice of sizing on this bike. Uh, as many of you will know, the Spectral on comes with a Shimano E8000 motor in there with an external battery. Uh, what's specific about this particular bike is that it's got a 29 inch wheel and a 27.5 on the rear, which is, they were pretty much the pioneers of, of that kind of mix and match wheel size. Now there is a Mavic wheel set on here and it is a EX30 Elite. That's a, a new Mavic wheel set from France. Now Fabian's obviously got a super grippy uh, tie combination on this bike. He's got a 2.5 Asagai on the back. That's a 3C Max grip. And up front is a Minion DHF also in 2.5. Now. Uh, handlebars, looking at 780 millimeters. Grips from Ergon, those are the GA2s, which is matched with the uh, Pro Titanium seat there, again from Ergon. As you can see, uh, the seat is pushed all the way forward to help him when it comes to climbing. Uh, he's running uh, some Code RSC brakes in it, with, as you can see, the 200 mil rotors front and rear, and he's got 160 mil cranks on it. Now, you might have noticed that the fork is actually a little bit longer than normal. Now Fabian runs 170 mil Lyric RockShox on this bike. Uh, we'll talk to Fabian a little bit on his choice uh, about that. But what I'm really interested in is why he's gone for the 170, because that could actually upset the geometry on that bike and make the bottom bracket a little bit too high, which means it's gonna affect the corner. And so uh, Fabian, can you tell me, can you come on in here and discuss, first of all, your choice of wheel, your choice of frame size, and also, your choice of uh, putting the 174 cut up there. But first of all, size large. Now you are a man that is known for pushing the boundaries of frame sizes, especially on downhill bikes. You were the first to kind of push that Kona. That's super long. Back in the years and yeah. also the forward geometry with Mondraker and yeah. now with all, all the, the new raised geometry that yeah. we have on the Canyon bikes. Yeah. And uh, for sure that my choice right away at the beginning when I got into e-bike development was the XL. Yeah. size that is shooting more my general basis but I quickly realized that the central masses of an e-bike was actually bringing you guys a lot of stability. The reason for me to go for a long chassis on a normal bike was always to gain that stability and create you know an excess of momentum through the track but on an e-bike I quickly realized it wasn't really needed because that stability was coming to the center and low mass of the engine and battery and that I could allow myself to have a slightly smaller reach and, and more playful geometry. Were you surprised when you first rode this bike how how well balanced the, the mix and match of 29 and 27.5 is because it feels like it's a wheel size the same front rear. Right? I, I, I have to be honest that we did some testing before also on other bikes, so it wasn't quite new for me. And I knew that the balance of hybrid was something very interesting, you know, keeping the back end super dynamic, easy to place when the front wheel was providing you a lot of stability for commitment. Yeah. And um, on this bike, the choice, and, and you probably noticed, I don't know if you guys um, uh, talked about it in the past, but the chain stay are super short. Yeah. Very short compared to a standard e-bike. And this is due to the position we gave to the engine with a slight rotation to have the BB and the space in between the rear wheel and the front triangle very narrow. Now, the reason to have a short chain stay is, as you say, to make the bike playful and feel like a normal man bike. Well, right? our goal at Canyon was to make a bike that was actually Actually, a real bicycle and not a motorized tempted yeah. uh, 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 bicycle yeah. and this 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 assistance that we are looking through the engine doesn't have to take off the playful exactly. side of the bike so we wanted to keep bikes that was that was real so for sure and let's be honest that climbing having a long chain stay is an advantage it is. in terms of motricity but then it does make you also be more passenger on the bike when it's time to go down yeah. and our choice was definitely to keep a super playful bike yeah, and make the rider more dynamic as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah now, totally. And talking about moving the bike around, uh, I can see some stickers on your rear damper. 
yeah. something special about that shock absorber, well, Fabian? We, 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 did, we did obviously uh, have quite a ramp on, on that model, mm. on the Spectralon, to have a lot of support when yeah. it was coming down to yeah. G out yeah. and push through the bike, like, like the Torque, the Spectral, the Sender. But obviously, uh, as I'm pushing a little more than, than, than standard rider, I, I did put quite a bit of, uh, of low speed control and uh, extra token to make sure that I could have the ramping towards the end that was well absorbing the masses of the bike itself. Which on any bike, when you go full compression, it's often one of the main issues for, for hard attacking riders. Fabian, have you been having a uh, fun riding this e-bike? I mean, you've gone from downhill, yeah. enduro, now I, e-bikes. I, I, I have to say that I have a lot of fun on all my bikes, <laughs> uh, but I do ride the e-bike a lot, and I got a chance to have a lot of friends around, as e-bike, as we said, is quite big around the area. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the potential climbing, going down, is absolutely unreal. I did the choice to have a 170 fork on the front to, to have a certain aggressivity and, and being able to push harder yeah. on, on the rough terrain we have around the how, area. How is that? going to affect your bottom bracket height because we all know that you know if you hide the bottom bracket yeah. the bike is not going to corner as, as effectively good, yeah. as it is so slower. You, you do know that there is an adjustment obviously on the spectral on right uh, that allows you to change the geometry of the bike mm -hmm. not on the go like the shape shifter yeah, yeah. would do but you have a little uh, six mil allen key or eight mil allen key that allows you to change that so position. you're going to sit in the lower position so i am always in the lowest position mm -hmm. i did lift slightly my handlebar and and and, okay. and having a higher front but yeah, yeah. my sag point is still around 35 when most people will ride around so 30. Explain to people why you raise the handlebar height. Well, the reason for me is because I'm always trying to have a, a, as neutral position as possible. And uh, and more than anything, when you, when you have um, uh, a 29 front wheel, you have most possibility to attack. Yeah. So most people believe that rising the handlebar will actually bring the masses towards the rear of the bike, mm -hmm. which is currently, from my experience, and this is my point of view, the opposite. Mm -hmm. When you generally lift the handlebar, if you keep the same position, mm -hmm. your gravity center does go back. Yeah. But because you rise your handlebar, you have easier contact to your front wheel. It does bring you confidence to the front wheel and you naturally more flexing your arm and bringing your attacking mode yeah. further the front. So I would say that more you trust your front wheel, and more you want to push on it, more you'll be able to rise your bar until obviously the lack of control yeah. in the appeals, etc. I think if you guys are looking to change the geometry of your bike, I think Fabian, you, it's, a, it's about it's about experimenting, right? Pretty yeah, you, you have to thing. try things out. It also it de right. depends on your arms and, 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 and legs length, uh, your general habits and type exactly. of riding. And I'm very gravity oriented and I'm super happy about that setup. Yeah. So there you go, a uh, really interesting insight there into Fabian's uh, bike. Uh, if you want to see more videos on uh, pro bikes, check out the one we did with Fabian's neighbor, Nico Vulios, uh, just down by here. Let us know your comments on Fabian's pretty custom bike. Uh, and don't forget, you can like, share and subscribe to EMBN. Thanks, Fabian. Thank you. Yeah.